a lot of you ask me, hey, did you see this, this thing on The Athletic about the future of college football and about how there's a group out there that wants to just completely blow the sport up and redefine it and they're going to redefine what a conference is and some haves will be left and some have-nots won't and they want to restructure the playoff and they want to do all this stuff. Well, of course I read it. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, I have a summary here in my hand. I wrote it down for you. It won't take long. Another group has another plan with another hidden agenda behind it. The end. I don't necessarily think it has a ton of traction. So why am I leading the show with it? Well, I think there's a ton to this. As I told you on December 30th, in that little tweet I fired off from Pasadena, California, and as I I have alluded to a couple of times since then, there is a near unanimous consent behind the scenes that major, major, major changes are coming in college football and athletics. But specifically, uh, there's never been a broader consensus, at least as far as I can tell, that there's big stuff coming, big changes coming in college football. So yesterday when this story came out, I tweeted out the three little alert light emojis and I put them out and I said, hey, this is what I'm talking about. But the article's not what I'm talking about. So as you guys probably saw, if you read this article, and if you didn't, it's over there right now on the Athletics College Football page, you saw that this group that has this grand idea has a lot of very interesting backers, and they have thus far been met with frosty reception at best from some of the power players in college football, i.e. the Big Ten, the SEC. And that's not by coincidence. That's by design. I don't necessarily think the story that is presented in the athletics piece is the big story. That's not the big eruption. Uh, our buddy Chris, who, who loves this sport as much as anyone, man, uh, one of our longtime listeners and viewers, he was very vocal yesterday, as he normally is, about anything expansion or realignment related. And he said, this seems like uh, much to do about nothing. It looks like the big boys aren't on board with this. And I said, you're so close. I said that to him. You're so close. It's like Hannibal Lecter. You, you're so close to how you're going to catch him. How? Tell me how, doctor. Well, uh, Hannibal Lecter did not tell Clarice how, because that would have been a really short movie. But I am going to tell you, Chris and everyone else, the story's not in this athletic piece. The story is what the SEC and the Big Ten are actually planning as a response or a deterrent to making sure this particular plan doesn't get off the ground. What you will notice if you go back and comb through that athletic story is you'll notice this little deadline we had a couple of weeks ago now, I guess it was, where there was this line in the sand. Remember, there was that big Friday. We were all looking forward to it. And there was this there was this deadline, per se, where they had to have that new playoff contract agreed upon. Well, one fascinating tidbit in this athletic piece is That was self-imposed to try and get out ahead of this other plan that they didn't want to gain traction around the college football industry. So now, and granted, I didn't know that. So now that makes a little more sense. But in the broader scheme of things, I have and will continue to maintain to you, nothing about this is going to change in a significant way if it doesn't have the SEC's blessing and it doesn't have Greg Sankey's blessing, if it doesn't have the Big Ten's blessing and Tony Petiti's blessing and all of those chancellors and presidents, if they're not on board, nothing's really getting off the ground. And guys, that's not even to get into the weeds of how do you untangle these agreed upon television deals. So I don't even suggest you worry about that. I'm not particularly worried about it. If it doesn't get off the ground, it doesn't get off the ground. The big story is, what is the actual plan? Because they're right. The path in multiple fronts we're on right now is not sustainable, and everyone understands that. But what is the plan? You don't know. You don't know because there is no athletic feature. Ross Dellinger over at Yahoo is not spelling that out. It's behind closed door. It's under lock and key right now. There are people who know, I'll tell you this, since I'm a little removed from the event now and you guys haven't been tracking where I've been, I was somewhere in the last couple of weeks, talked to a very, very prominent uh, person in the legal side of this entire thing. And uh, this is a guy who knows his stuff and he will, of course, remain nameless and faceless. But the sorts of details that he gave me were A, thoroughly vetted, B, meant to be kept off the record entirely and C sounded nothing like anything that's being reported. 
And that's just to say the real traction, the real gears that are turning behind the scenes are happening in virtual silence. And if someone is privy to it, they're not talking because it's a very, very uncrowded room. And so I don't doubt that there are a lot of groups like this and a few groups like this with plans. And I don't doubt that they've got a ton of thought and a ton of money put into and behind the plan. But if you don't have the blessing and sign off of the big boys, it's not going anywhere, which begs the question I asked earlier today. The SEC and the Big Ten will ultimately decide the future of college athletics. Point blank, case closed. If you don't like that, it's going to be a tough future for you. I asked you guys earlier today, let's say you were the SEC. Let's say you were the Big Ten. You're kind of a king. You can do whatever you want to. What would your goal be in the future? Because I will tell you one thing that drives me up a wall is the attitude sometimes that the SEC and the Big Ten take, and that is what will we let the ACC or the Big 12 have? What will we let the G5 have? And they're saying that from a position of power, and it's no different in college athletics than any other walk of life. If you enjoy the position of power, you sort of get to dictate some of the terms. What aggravates me is, unlike some walks of life, people in decision-making chairs in these big conferences did not build the conferences. They themselves have virtually no responsibility and no stake in why these are such valuable properties to begin with. The answer is fan engagement. The answer is the Southeastern Conference happens to have been built over decades and decades and decades by many different people, but it all had one common thread. Ditto in the Big Ten. The common thread is there are enough places with ties to those conferences where a whole lot of people care very deeply about the product on, let's say, the football field. Somewhere along the way, you became a commissioner. Somewhere along the way, you became an executive at a television network that has a contract with the league. You didn't build it. Okay, so this braggadocious, big-chested attitude a lot of people take, and they turn their nose up in the process of kind of scoffing, smirk on the face. Let's see what we'll let them have. How about this? How about you take two seconds and you ask yourself, why do you have the position of power? Why does the SEC enjoy the position of power? Well, we have the most money. Why do you have the most money? Well, you, because we've got really, really big member institutions that have won a lot. Why have they won a lot? I mean, did God create it that way? Like, is, is there somewhere in Genesis where the SEC or the Big Ten, of course that's not what it says, because of course that's not how it happened. But what you did have at your disposal a long, long time ago is people in the state of Alabama or people in the state of Ohio that care a lot about football. They care a lot about athletics. To your benefit, uh, tens and, and sometimes hundred years later, to your benefit. But my question today was... Um, What would ultimately serve those people? What do people in the SEC or the Big Ten ultimately want? Because what you find is they don't care about the size of their conference's TV deal, nor should they. They don't necessarily care about the media markets that are encompassed by the SEC or Big Ten media rights deal, nor should they. They're actually college football fans. They are Michigan fans. They are Florida fans. But they're college football fans. And if you ask these folks, what they'd love is... They'd love to beat that chest about the SEC. They'd also love college football as a whole to be better. Here's the great unknown. Craig Sankey in the SEC, Tony Petiti in the Big Ten, got virtually all the power in the room moving forward. How will they use it? Because that's going to decide the future of college athletics. I'm in a wait-and-see approach on that. I got voices on both shoulders telling me radically different things. I'm in a wait-and-see mode on that. But I will tell you, if you're waiting for the... The eruption to happen, it will happen. Fundamental change, major change is coming in this sport. It's coming in college athletics. It'll be when they're ready for it. Then and only then.